In the sprawling hills of a remote countryside stood Villa Senil, a grand estate with a history as mysterious as the shadows that danced within its walls. Owned by the enigmatic Senil, the villa was a haven of luxury and opulence, where the whispers of the past mingled with the scent of exotic spices. But behind its facade of grandeur lurked a dark secret, one that whispered of malevolent forces at play. For within the villa's elegant chambers, a sinister presence stirred, preying on the unsuspecting souls who dared to cross its threshold. Enter Sanjay and Sharita, a young couple drawn into the web of intrigue woven by Villa Sunil. Seduced by promises of wealth and comfort, they soon find themselves ensnared in a nightmare beyond their wildest imaginings. As they uncover the chilling truth behind the villa's haunting, they are plunged into a desperate battle for survival against forces from the realm of the supernatural. Amidst the swirling mists of uncertainty, they must confront their deepest fears and unravel the mystery that shrouds Villa Sunil in darkness. But as they journey deeper into the heart of the unknown, they will discover that some secrets are best left undisturbed, for the price of knowledge may be far greater than they ever dared to imagine. Enjoy the story. This story is about a Hindi family in South America. They had a very small house, and their living conditions were almost inhumane. Every day, they had to find a way to get food. They couldn't afford electricity, and they experienced cold, wet nights, or excessively hot days repeatedly. The roof was made of zinc, and it leaked enormously whenever it rained. One morning, Sharita woke up feeling extremely nauseous and unable to do household chores. Sanjay, her husband, had to stay home to support her. The young couple was disappointed because not working meant no money. Fortunately, they occasionally received groceries from Sanjay's mother, who didn't have much herself, but always tried to help the young couple as much as she could. Sharita's condition worsened, and she needed to see a doctor, but they didn't have the money for the consultation fee. Sanjay decided to borrow money from his uncle. Arriving there, he looked around. Every time he visited his uncle, he enjoyed the surroundings and dreamed of one day being as wealthy as him. His uncle had a large house, a beautiful villa. The master bedrooms in his house were even bigger than Sharita and Sanjay's entire house. Uncle, sorry to bother you again, but my wife is very ill and needs to see a doctor. Can you lend me some money for that? and perhaps some to get through the month. I must stay home to take care of her and can't go to work. Uncle Senior looked concerned at his nephew. You've borrowed a lot of money over the years. Let's do things differently now. You and your wife will come live with me, and then you can do certain tasks here. I was planning to lay off some staff anyway, so it's a win-win situation. Sanjay was super excited about the proposal and couldn't wait to tell his wife. He thanked Uncle Sunil and walked happily towards the exit. Sharita, come here, Sanjay told his wife, sharing his uncle's proposal. Sanjay, you know I've never liked your uncle. He always looks at me as if he wants something from me. I'd rather stay here than go there to his beautiful villa and be unhappy. My choice is already made. I'll take you to the doctor, and I'll call my brother to help me pack. And as soon as it's ready, we'll leave. I want to get you out of this unlivable environment. Sharita complained. Sanjia, his wife left him, and his daughter can't have children. He's an old, frustrated man, and... Sharita, enough, Sanjay shouted. Sharita gave up. After her visit to the doctor, there was big news. She was pregnant 
with their first child. Sanjay was overjoyed and said, See, Sharita, our child doesn't have to live in this situation. You'll have a good pregnancy. That same evening, they moved in with Uncle Sunil. Upon arrival, they were greeted by the smell of the most delicious dishes. Uncle Sunil had tried to provide them with everything. Sharita found herself thinking that she could get used to this lifestyle very quickly. They sat down at the large dining table, and the young couple hadn't eaten so deliciously in years. It felt like Christmas, New Year's, and a birthday party all rolled into one. After dinner, Uncle Sunil made sure they were taken to their room. Sharita and Sanjay marveled as the servant opened the door to their room. There was a large wooden canopy bed, a beautiful sofa set, and a bathroom with a jacuzzi. Sharita had her own walk-in closet, and as she walked through it, she realized she had no clothes to fill it. The air conditioning was on high, and she enjoyed it. Meanwhile, her husband was unpacking everything. Take it easy, Sharita. You're pregnant and shouldn't strain yourself, he said, concerned. The first night was very romantic. It had been so long since the young couple had spent time in a beautiful room on a soft bed. Sanjay was gentler, kinder, and happier than usual. Sharita began to feel guilty that she had initially not wanted to move in with Uncle Sunil. She was glad she had gone along in the end. The next morning, there was an early knock on the door. Sanjay quickly got up, and when they came downstairs, breakfast was already served. Uncle Sunil was reading the newspaper. You can eat as much as you want, and then Sunil will start working, he said. Sharita, you will go to the city with the servant Nana. I'll give you an advance to buy clothes. Sharita couldn't believe her ears. She thanked Uncle Sunyel warmly for this. After breakfast, Sanjay received a schedule with his daily tasks and immediately got to work. Nana was already prepared to go to the city with Sharita. As they walked outside, a luxurious Mercedes with a chauffeur was waiting for them. Nana was a young woman, and soon Sharita and the servant were deeply engrossed in conversation. They clicked well. The day passed pleasantly, and they shopped a lot. The evening came, and Sharita put on a beautiful nightgown. It was red and entirely made of lace. Underneath, she wore a red lace slip too. Wow, said Sanjay, you look so beautiful. He began to kiss her tenderly on her neck. Slowly, he put his hand into her slip, and she moaned with pleasure. His head went down, and she felt his tongue entering her body. Suddenly, he stopped and said, I don't know what it is, but I feel like we're being watched. At that moment, they heard a loud noise coming from the bathroom. Sharita looked at her husband anxiously. What was that? she asked. Wait, I'll go check said Sanjay. You stay here. Sharita pulled the blanket over herself. There was a strange and eerie atmosphere in the room. Sanjay returned and said he hadn't seen anything. He sat on the edge of the bed to talk to his wife when suddenly they heard a tap running. They were now really scared and walked together to the bathroom. All the taps were on and the furniture in the room began to move on its own. That was the last straw. Screaming, the young couple ran downstairs. Nana came out of the kitchen to see what was going on. In total panic, they told the story. Meanwhile, Uncle Sunil came walking up and asked what was going on. Somehow, the story didn't seem to surprise him. Calm down, he said with a peculiar look in his eyes. It's just the stress of the past few months. Sharita stuttered. No, Uncle Sunil, this has nothing to do with stress. 
We both saw what happened, didn't we, Sanjay? To her surprise, Sharita saw that her husband hesitated and went along with his uncle's explanation. Uncle Senyal suggested they go back to sleep. He gave Sharita a lewd look. She still had her lace dress on and had completely forgotten about it due to the panic. She became very embarrassed and covered her breasts with her hands to be somewhat covered. Back in the room, Sharita's husband unpacked everything. Take it easy, Sharita. You're pregnant and shouldn't overexert yourself, he said worriedly. The first night was very romantic. It had been so long since the young couple had spent time in a beautiful room on a soft bed. Sanjay was gentler, kinder, and happier than usual. Sharita began to feel guilty that she had initially not wanted to move in with Uncle Sunil. She was glad she had gone along in the end. The next morning, there was an early knock on the door. Sanjay quickly got up, and when they came downstairs, breakfast was already served. Uncle Sunil was reading the newspaper. You can eat as much as you want, and then Sunil will start working, he said. Sharita, you will go to the city with the servant Nana. I'll give you an advance to buy clothes. Sharita couldn't believe her ears. She thanked Uncle Sunil warmly for this. After breakfast, Sanjay received a schedule with his daily tasks and immediately got to work. Nana was already prepared to go to the city with Sharita. As they walked outside, a luxurious Mercedes with a chauffeur was waiting for them. Nana was a young woman, and soon Sharita and the servant were deeply engrossed in conversation. They clicked well. The day passed pleasantly, and they shopped a lot. The evening came, and Sharita put on a beautiful nightgown. It was red and entirely made of lace. Underneath, she wore a red lace slip, too. Wow, said Sanjay, you look so beautiful. He began to kiss her tenderly on her neck. Slowly, he put his hand into her slip, and she moaned with pleasure. His head went down, and she felt his tongue entering her body. Suddenly. He stopped and said, I don't know what it is, but I feel like we're being watched. At that moment, they heard a loud noise coming from the bathroom. Sharita looked at her husband anxiously. What was that? She asked. Wait, I'll go check, said Sanjay. You stay here. Sharita pulled the blanket over herself. There was a strange and eerie atmosphere in the room. Sanjay returned and said he hadn't seen anything. He sat on the edge of the bed to talk to his wife, when suddenly they heard a tap running. They were now really scared and walked together to the bathroom. All the taps were on, and the furniture in the room began to move on its own. This was the last straw. The young couple dashed downstairs, screaming in terror. Nana emerged from the kitchen to see what was happening. In a state of panic, they recounted the story to her. Meanwhile, Uncle Seniel strolled over, his expression oddly unsurprised. Relax, he said, with a peculiar glint in his eyes. It's just the stress of the past few months catching up with you. No, Uncle Seniel, this isn't stress, Sharita stuttered. We both saw what happened, didn't we, Sanjay? To Sharita's astonishment, Sanjay hesitated, ultimately going along with his uncle's explanation. Uncle Sunyel suggested they go back to sleep. As they returned to their room, Sharita, still wearing her lace dress, realized she had forgotten about it in the chaos. She felt embarrassed and instinctively covered herself with her hands. Once back in their room, Sharita asked her husband for an explanation. Sharita, things are finally going well for us. Uncle Suenil pays me better than my previous boss, and we're living in a villa. 
let's just forget about it. It's probably nothing. He might even send us away if we keep causing trouble. After some time, Sharita fell asleep. She dreamed of a handsome young man entering her room, gazing at her with intense affection. His captivating gaze overwhelmed her, making her feel as though she had no will of her own. He took her hand and led her out of the room, her red dress billowing as if caught in a strong wind. Introducing himself as Moon, he led her to his room, the most beautiful she had ever seen. He lifted her onto the bed and whispered, Now, you're mine, Sharita. Unable to resist, she surrendered to his advances, feeling a level of excitement she had never experienced before. He caressed and kissed her entire body, igniting sensations she had never known. He put a nipple in his mouth and started sucking hard. In the meantime, she felt him slide inside her and made love to her all night long. She had orgasm after orgasm and fell asleep exhausted. Furthermore, she dreamed that she woke up and the young man was lying with his back to her. She called softly to Moon. Moon! But he vanished. She got up and searched the whole room, but he was nowhere to be found. Suddenly, she heard the jacuzzi filling up and she walked straight to the bathroom. She was so shocked and started screaming like crazy because instead of Moon, she found an enormous frog in the tub. She fainted and lay lifeless on the bathroom floor. By morning, Sanjay woke up, and to his great surprise, Sharita wasn't beside him. He searched the entire house. Nana was busy sweeping the living room and asked Sanjay what was wrong. I, I can't find my wife, he stuttered. Nana's face turned pale and she pulled him by the hand into a room at the back of the large villa. They opened the door, and there lay Sharita, completely naked on the floor. Sanjay rushed into the room and shook his wife awake. Completely bewildered, she looked at him and didn't know why she was there. Nana didn't know how to say it, but it seemed that their uncle served a spirit that appeared in the form of a frog. He had taken in a young couple before, and they had left overnight. The couple had complained several times about a haunting, but their uncle paid no attention to it. Sharita looked at her husband fearfully. What do we do, Sanjay? She whispered anxiously. We've already told your uncle things, and we didn't get a clear response. What now? Sanjay was inwardly panicking, but wanted to appear strong for his wife. Let's discuss this again with my uncle. Who knows, maybe Nana is just jealous of us and making things up. Deep down, Sanjay knew he was lying to his wife. The fear of returning to his impoverished situation was greater than the fear of the frog. They decided to discuss it at dinner Uncle Sunil was in a cheerful mood and had once again made the most delicious dishes prepared by the house chef. Sanjay carefully chose his words. Uncle Sunil, we want to discuss something with you, can we? Tell me, said Uncle Sunil with a broad smile. We want to talk about the strange occurrences happening here. My wife and I are affected by them. Uncle Sunil calmly listened to the story. So, if I understand correctly, according to you, there's a ghost haunting my house, he asked with an odd tone. Well, I know what happened to us, Sharita said boldly, and that's not normal. Uncle Sunil's face tightened as if he could erupt at any moment. We're not accusing you, Uncle Sunil, Sanjay defended. We just want to know if you've ever noticed anything strange in your house. I've never experienced anything strange, Uncle Sunil said, now a bit angrier. But if you want, 
you can go back to your shack. I didn't take you in to insult me, ungrateful rats. Uncle Sunil slammed his hand on the table, and Sharita stood up. I'm going to pack my things now, she shouted, tears welling in her eyes. Sanjia stayed behind to talk to his uncle. When they arrived in the room, Sharita angrily began packing her belongings. Suddenly, she felt a cold wind. She turned around and saw the young man from her dream. She stood frozen, staring at the apparition, holding her breath. The door opened, and in shock, Sharita screamed so loud that it echoed throughout the villa. What's wrong, Sharita? Sanjay asked. I was startled because you came in so unexpectedly, she replied, trying to compose herself. I want to leave, Sanjay, preferably today, Sharita insisted. Let's sleep on it for one more night. We shouldn't make drastic decisions now, Sanjay suggested. But... Sharita attempted to protest, but Sanjay interrupted. We'll sleep one more night and then decide, he said firmly. The young couple was very tired and decided to go to bed early. Sharita fell into a deep sleep. Soon, she began to dream. Two soft hands caressed her legs. Slowly, the hands parted her legs. Sharita began to moan and opened her eyes. Moon, she said softly, as his hypnotic eyes gazed at her with longing. I've missed you, Sharita, he whispered hoarsely, pulling her out of bed and leading her outside. The cool night wind blew against her legs. A romantic atmosphere surrounded them. Sharita felt deep love for this mysterious man and struggled to ignore the feeling. He led her to the garden shed, which looked very different from reality. Look, Sharita, if you become mine, all this will be yours. She looked and saw large chests filled with gold and jewels, rubies and diamonds. He tenderly kissed her neck and Sharita was completely entranced. There was a small table with two white candles. You haven't eaten well, have some food. Sharita began to eat the dishes on the table. By the end of this evening, you must tell me if you want to be with me or not. Sharita looked at the stunning young man and said, I don't need to wait. I am yours from now on. She wondered why she said this to herself. She loved Sanjay deeply, and she was also pregnant. As you wish, said Moon. But first, we must resolve something. Sharita didn't understand what the young man meant, but she was so intensely happy that she didn't worry about it. Together, they made love, the candlelight shining on the couple, an unprecedented romance. Suddenly, Sharita felt intense cramps. She screamed in pain. Sharita, Sharita! Sanjay tried to wake his wife. Moon, help! Sharita cried out, distressed. Who is Moon? Sanjay asked angrily. Her eyes were wide open now, and she realized that she had been dreaming all this time. The feeling of being with Moon grew stronger. She was completely under his control. Pack your things. We're leaving, Sanjay said. I'm going to talk to my uncle and thank him for his help. No, Sanja, I'm staying here. This is my life. Sanja looked at his wife in amazement. She had a vacant look in her eyes that he couldn't place. Sharita, I know I didn't listen to you. We should have left yesterday, but I was afraid of returning to our situation. But, Sharita, anything is better than this, Sanjay insisted. Determined, he walked downstairs. Uncle Sunil was sitting at the table, reading his newspaper. He looked up briefly. Good morning, Sanjay. Hurry up. You need to repair the roof, Sunil said. Sanja looked at his uncle in surprise. Uncle Sunil, I want to thank you for everything, but my wife and I are leaving today. Sanja expected a confrontation, 
but instead, Sunil laughed heartily. After enjoying everything, feasting on the finest offerings, enjoying the money and luxury, suddenly, you want to leave. Sanjay looked at his uncle bewildered. Uncle Sunil, strange things are happening here, as we've complained about before, but you seem to pay no heed. That's why I must take my wife to safety. We're leaving today. No, Sanjia, I'm not going with you. My place and life are here. Sanjia turned around and saw his wife standing there, her gaze distant and absent. Sharita, you're not yourself, he said, grabbing her hand to drag her away. Suddenly, he felt a sharp blow to his head and fell unconscious. After a few hours, he regained consciousness slowly lifting his head to see where he was. His head felt heavy and throbbed painfully. Sharita, Sharita, he called out. He was in a dark room. It was icy cold. He quickly looked around, wiping his head. This is your new living space. Who, who's there? Sanjay said in panic. Slowly, he stood up to find the voice. Where are you, bastard? Show yourself. Sanjia tried to find an exit. He ran through the room, but he kept ending up in the same spot. It's been a long time since I've had an offering. Finally, he found a good one. A beautiful young lady to stand by me. As my wife, the voice said. You don't have much time before you become poor. Show yourself. Sanjia yelled angrily trying harder to find an exit. The frog laughed and said, I'm not the worst, Sanjia. If you promise to leave me alone, I'll let you go, but your wife is mine. Sunil was as poor as you. He made a deal with me to become rich, but every five years, he must sacrifice a young woman. I live with her for a while, and then I take her soul. Sanjia couldn't believe his ears. He was speaking to something inhuman. He had a flashback of Sharita, telling him that Sunil looked at her strangely and forced her to come here. Her feeling was right. But still, he forced her to come along. And now look. Tears streamed down his cheeks. He began to pray to his gods. Now you decide, said the frog. I'll let you go, and you leave. Another option is that this becomes your living space until death, or until I get hungry. The frog looked at Sanjai menacingly. Sanjai chose to leave. Suddenly, he looked around and found himself outside the room at the top of the stairs. He saw Sharita and his uncle sitting at the table. Nana was washing dishes. I need to talk to Nana, he thought. Maybe she can help me. He walked calmly downstairs and motioned for Nana to come outside. She looked around nervously. Sunyal was engrossed in conversation with Sharita, completely unaware of what was happening around him. Quickly, Sanjay explained the situation to Nana. Keep an eye on my wife, Nana. I'm going to seek help. Nana looked deeply into Sanjay's eyes and said, there is no help. She has been sacrificed. She will lose her child, which is the first soul the frog will take. Then she will have to live with him until the day of sacrifice. And then she will die. Sanjay began to scream in fear. He ran back inside and saw the frog sitting at the table with his wife. He grabbed Sharita and pulled her away, but she broke free and said, Sanjay, I belong to him now, and return to him, the one who took her soul. Sanjay searched everywhere for help, but he never got his wife back. Nobody believed him. He was tormented by guilt towards his wife and child. Sanjay's life was never the same again. He was scarred for life.